Hello YouTube again. So, today we're going to be discussing Wine and Lutris and giving you an example on how to install a video game using Wine as well as how to use Lutris as well. So before we do, just something to go over from the last video that was kind of getting me scratching. So it does get getting me to scratch my head. So, if you go to Sorcery and if we look for Wine we see here we have the wine staging, which is um, a version of wine that has some development features some that they're testing, but there isn't just a plain wine, and I was wondering why that is the case. So if we go over here and go to Edit, Preferences, and look at the sources, actually Sorcery isn't pointing to slackbuilds.org, but is pointing to a sales repository. So it looks like Salix is maintaining their own Slack builds, or probably using the same, or probably they may be even selecting which Slack builds to host, and using and having Sorcery point to that. So that kind of cleared that up. So I was wondering why certain um, Slack builds and Slack builds like Org weren't showing up in Sorcery. So if you're wondering too, this is why. But back to the topic at hand. So. What is wine? Arch Linux Forum has a really good definition of wine, and it is it's a compatibility layer capable of running Windows program applications on Unix-like operating systems. Wine technically is not an emulator; it's it's more like a, a go between between the Windows app and, and the Linux system. So, so the way I understand it is what wine does is, is it takes the Windows application system calls and actually translate those to Linux system calls. So, so that way these programs can run under Linux. And if you have time, I would really suggest you go through the ArchWiki document on Wine. This is probably one of the most thorough and complete explanations on what Wine is, how it works, how to use it, um, some really good tips and tricks, and helping you troubleshoot. Um, some issues you may come across in wine. I mean, I reference this when using wine all the time. It is fantastic. So, let us start. What I do when I use wine is I first create a directory called Wine Bottles. And let's see, you know what? I'm going to, let's see. Let's make the font a little bit bigger. That way you can see what I'm doing. Let's, let's do let's do 16. And okay. There we go. MKDR wine balls. Alright, and so what I'm gonna do here is in this directory I am going to um, host individual containers of my applications. And actually, here, um, the ArchWiki probably explains it explains it a little, a little better than I do. And it's called um, it's called a wine prefix. So by default, Wine stores its configuration files in and installed Windows programs in .wine. So that's the default Wine prefix. So that is kind of the little container environment where your Windows programs reside. And so by default, when you run Wine on a Windows executable, it creates this .wine container. Now the thing is, there are certain games that require different configurations in Wine, different ways, you know, different settings you got to tweak. So a, um, a neat way to kind of keep those programs separate is you can actually create different prefixes or different little containers um, on your system and have a container for one program and have a container for the other for the other program. And the way you do that is by invoking the Wine prefix. Um, option when you create your environment. So the way I do it is first I do win arch to to um, specify the arch the architecture. So win thirty two. Then oops, wine prefix is in is this wine bottles and let's see star. Wine, CFG, and make sure that everything's correct. 
point XCS. Oh, this book went arch. And as we see, he says, Hey, you want to install mono? Yes, we do. So, right now, it's, um, every time you um, start a new wipe prefix, um, it will ask you if you want to install mono or, mono or gecko, at least at the first time. And then after after that, I don't recall if it asks that for more, or just uses the one it has stored in cache. So the game we uh, while this is running, let's talk about the game we're going to be installing is a game that I bought in 2006 called Star Wars Empire Or. The game I saved up for and thoroughly enjoyed playing, and it was really sad, you know, that I really couldn't play it anymore for a long time until I discovered Wine. And so when I first tried to install this in Wine, it just did not work. Graphics were just horrible. Um, the game, I really couldn't play the game. Like it installed fine, but um, just the, the pictures were blurry and I, and I really couldn't see what was going on and it was just it was just really annoying and so I kept searching and searching and I eventually found this blog post that said we need to set this setting in wine this particular DLL and and this gentleman said once we set this DLL everything was working fine and so I gave it a shot and yes so we, we will be doing that once it installs, I believe, the mono installer, and I believe it installs the Gecko engine as well. So once those two things are done, um, we are going to go into the wine configuration, and we're going to walk around, and we're going to set this up, and then we're going to start the install. So let me pause the video now while this is while this is going on, and we will resume once it's complete. All right, we are done, and once you're complete, you'll get this little window out, and this is your wine configuration utility. And this configures your little wine environment. So if you go back over here to go back to Basilisk real quick. The instructions here say we have to set this DLL to native. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we go to libraries over here. And if we type D3D 9X, and then if we do this. Usually finds it right away. Let's see. Okay, E three three nine X nine and thirty six. There it is. We're gonna add it. Edit. We're gonna set it's native. Apply. And one more setting I wanted to go. Let's go back over here because there's one thing I wanted to show. So the version of wine we're using is wine staging. Now wine staging has some experimental features that um, that they toy with before they actually deploy it in wine. And one feature they have, if you click over here to staging, is this guy here, enable CM CSMT for better graphic performance. So we are going to click that to enable. Now it's not really going to help for this particular game. This game is pretty old, but I, as a habit, do it because there are certain games that just simply will not play without this enabled. Like, for instance, um, Dark Souls 3. So if, you're, well, if you want to play Dark Souls 3 in Underwine, you have to have this enabled. And there are a few other um, Windows games and Steam that will not play. And, and when I say will not play, I mean the game will load, but you'll, you'll get a ton of flickering or the graphics will just look completely off and it really becomes unplayable. So just as a habit, you know, just check that off if you're if you're running wine staging. Okay, so with that said, we are going to go and we are going to go into here and press CD to mount CD-ROM, and what we're going to do is. Whenever you, whenever you run, uh, uh, whenever you run the wine utility, and you want to install a game in a particular what, what's called the wine prefix, you always have to have these parameters defined. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in wine, and then we're going to do on Star Wars or .exe. Let me close this out real quick. Okay, so we're going to type in. Let's 
minimize here. So there. So winarch, win32, wine prefix, wine, and then the executable. So we're going to we are going to install. Next. Now it's going to ask for the, for the registration code. So I'm going to pause the video here while I type this in because this is my code. Sorry guys, you can't have it. So we'll resume after this part. All right, we are back. We are going to accept the terms. Yes. No, I'm not going to install Xfire. Who's really playing this game on the internet in, in 2017 or 2018 now? And we are going to do the automatic install. It only requires two gigs. Right, you have chosen automatic installation. Yes. And we're going to click next. And here you go. It's installing. Now, there are two CDs. So. Real quickly, if, if if you're going if you're going to install a game with multiple CDs, see here is the terminal. So right now I'm actually CD'd into Mountain CD-ROM, um, but when I switch the CD-ROMs or when I switch from disk one to disk two, I have before you switch from disk one to disk two, you want to CD back to your home directory because if you're CD'd into the CD-ROM directory while you take out a CD and put in a new CD, the system doesn't like that and the game can't recognize what disk it is and you end up having to just do everything over again. So when it comes time for, for um, the installer to ask for the new CD, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to CD back to... Let me close this one out. I'm going to CD back to my home directory, install the new disk, and it should just instantly pick up. So let me pause it right now while this is doing the install, and we will get back. Okay, so you see, the setup needs to insert the next, the next disk, so it wants disk two. So what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna control C, Notice the installer is still running even though I control seed. So don't worry, you're not going to break anything. But we want to CD out. Then I'm going to remove the disk. All right, disk one is removed. I'm grabbing disk two right now. Putting it in my CD-ROM tray. Over here, real quick, and we're going to verify that I can still that I can see the contents of said CD ROM. See, this is oh, I forgot to eject it. We see there we go, eject and start back in. should see, there we go, that's what you wanted to see. Before you click OK, make sure you see this, that you see this icon here, and you see this over here. So let's go over here, and now we should click OK, and it should just, there we go, it continues. So, because <sighs> that would have stung, I didn't do it all over again. So, always very important to be sure if you have multiple if you have multiple disk games before you click OK after you install the next disk, they actually see it all here. So 
here's a little tip for installing wine games. All right, so while this installer is going, I'm going to pause the video and then hopefully um, this shouldn't take too much longer to be complete. And then we're going to launch the game and just verify that it, that it plays. So, all right, catch you guys shortly. All right, so we're here at the end. Um, right, be right before the screen, it asked me to insert C1 um, again. So all I did was I went over here, I ejected CD2, inserted CD1, made sure I could read my files, come here, which now, would you like to launch Star Wars in part or not right now? And we're going to just finish the install. So let's see, I should have a launcher under my games directory. No, that's not here. Or oh, wait, wine. There it is. So let's see if it's this one. Awesome. Now let's verify that all the graphics are working correctly before we proceed. Let's see. Uh, never register. So. I hear the CD room going. There we go. It's doing something. It usually does not take this long. Interesting. It should not take this long to launch. It should just launch. Hmm. Okay. So we're here. Okay, over there. So that. Uh, let's cancel. Let's try the first launcher. I know, it's, I know it's, sometimes it's. Usually it just works. I've never had that happen before. And I'm wondering maybe it record my maybe it's simple screen recorder is just not liking me. So if this fails again, I'm gonna pause the video, see if it runs, and let you guys know. It is definitely. And yeah, there's something definitely going on. So let's close mine. Hmm. Right, let me pause this video and see if it's simple screen recorder. Hello, and we are back. And it actually took some, last well, some, it took a lot of troubleshooting, but the game is working. And to show you, here, and we're going to go to our wine folder, and look, we're going to launch. Let's be a little patient. It was, it was a lot of, a lot of troubleshooting and trying different things, but here we go. This is a Windows game, running in wine. And as you can see, all the graphics look nice. So there's no stuttering, no off. And this is the real key. So if if there are issues, you would see like like the um, the superstar destroyer, it would be the graphics would be really really weird, and all the little spaceships like all the Tie Fighters, you wouldn't be able to discern what they were. So the fact that we can see all this very clearly indicates that everything is working accordingly. So let's exit out of the game. All right. So let me go through the different steps I went uh, I went through to troubleshoot this, and then what I will do is I'll tell you what I finally did. So. The first thing I did 
was I installed Play on Linux. Play on Linux is it's, it's kind of a wine helper. Uh, good, okay. Um, there are a lot of pre-built wine configurations for certain games. Now they didn't have a pre-built one for uh, Star Wars Empire or. Um, but I wanted to see if just if trying to do the similar steps I did through Play on, Play on Linux would help. And unfortunately, I had the same issue. And usually, Play on Linux will install its own uh, wine binaries, but it was using the native um, wine binaries that I installed. Oh, and as a note, if you install um, the wine staging package versus the regular wine package and you want to use Play on Linux, when you install Play on Linux, it's going to give you a warning through Slapkit saying, hey, wine isn't installed because it doesn't recognize that wine staging is actually wine, but with um, some some development features. So but just click OK, go through the process, it will install. So I was kind of at this point getting really nervous thinking, is it the wine package that I installed? I mean, so I was kind of on the little nervous side thinking, um, what's going to happen? So hoping that, wondering do I have to uninstall and reinstall and, you know, so that was, my, my nerves were getting a little riled up, so what I did was then I installed Lutris. So let's go over here while we're talking. You know, I want to do a more in-depth discussion on Lutris a little bit later in a few moments, but so what Lutris does is it's, um, it's, it's kind of like Steam, where it's, 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 it's it's a it's a way to manage your games. As a matter of fact, you can link like this is my entire Steam library, and you can actually link your Steam account to Lutris, so so that way you could actually manage your games through here. But Lutris is a whole lot more. So in Lutris, you could actually manage your Linux games. You can manage your Wine games. You know, uh, games you you run in Wine, and you can manage your Windows Steam game. So, like this is a Wine game that's in my Windows Steam library. So, and also on top of all that, you could also manage all your emulation emulators. So, if you have ROMs for Nintendo 64, uh, Sega Genesis, even Commodore 64, like the um, like all the different versions of Atari that they had, the Atari 2600, the Atari. 5200, I think, I mean, it's just a wide list of emulators, so if you, this could be your one-stop shop to play all your retro games, your DOS box, you know, your old, if you have old DOS games that you want to play again, you know, it has DOS box, and you can actually play your DOS games, so, and, um, so what I did was, now Lutris actually downloads its own, you know, it actually downloads its own copy of Wine, so the version of Wine that Lutris runs isn't the version that's installed in your machine. It's a separate version that Lutris itself installs. So I wanted to see, well, if I install it through Lutris, would I get the same error, or would I get, um, uh, or would it actually work? If it actually worked, then I know, okay, then it's, it's my binary. It's the, it's the package that I installed. But when I installed it, it actually gave me the same error. So I'm thinking, okay, so I know that there's something going on. Since I've installed this game before, I know that it was probably something I, it was probably something I did in setting up my, my wine bottle. So what I did was I deleted everything, all right? And so let's grab my terminal, all right? So I deleted everything, all right? Recreated, here, let's see if we can find, all right? One and two. Didn't do any changes, so right. Pure wine config. I set this to XP, right? So you can, if you close, you can actually you can actually set to different environments. You can go all the way down to Windows 3.2, 3.1, and all the way up to Windows 10. But for most games, just set it to XP. That's all I did, right? And then I install. I am um, installed a package called the Wine Tricks, and let's see if I find it. Now, there is actually, um, I believe in Slapkit, there's actually a Wine Tricks package of Slapkit, but since I installed the Wine Staging package, Wine Tricks, didn't, wine tricks did not recognize, or Slapkit didn't recognize that Wine Tricks is actually wine, and so he refused to install the package. But 
it's no big deal. The actual the, the package is actually a series of scripts. So what so what you can do is you can actually click, um, get clone the latest version and install it yourself. And how I did it was let me see I seed it into my template directory. This is where I do all my my manual builds, and I just get cloned the repository, which you've seen how I've done that before. I seed it into my wine tricks directory, and all you really need to do is do a sudo make install because all of the series of scripts that it installs for you. So once you do that, okay, you can either run wine tricks through the command line or you could do a GUI. And basically what, what, what wine tricks does, wine tricks it lets you install um, just some additional Windows DLLs, um, some additional fonts if you, if you, if you need access to particular fonts. It's just uh, an, another way to help you you know, troubleshoot um, getting games working in Wine. So, for instance, let's just run it real quick so you can see how this works. So, what you do is, you, and whenever you use Wine, and whenever you're going to run a program in Wine, you always want to, like I said before, you always want to define your Wine environment. This over here, Wine Arch 132, Win Prefix, um, you, the directory where your where your program is, and then you're going to just click that. And we should see this is the window. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to select select default wine prefix, and then we're going to go to install Windows DLL or component, and click OK. And as you can see, these are the packages I installed. And I kind of went overboard. You know, you really, I really shouldn't have had to do all this, but I wanted to roll it out. So I installed the the uh, D3 DRM DLL the D3 DX9 DLL, which installs all of these. The direct music, the direct play, and then the direct X9. And this one, you see, it even gives you a warning. Usually try just this first, which I did, and it didn't work. So then I clicked OK, and it went through and installed it, and it even gave me another warning saying, are you sure you want to do this? Click yes. All right, so once all those were installed, you cancel, cancel, cancel again. Then I went through the same install process that I did previously. Once everything installed correctly, launched the game, and it worked. So the native wine the native wine binary in Salix is perfectly fine. You know the issue was um, just how I set up my wine environment, and this also reveals kind of the trickiness of wine. Now there are going to be plenty of games that you're not going to have to do any fiddling. You're just going to create your wine environment, or if you want, you know, just use the default wine environment, install your game, and it'll play. There are plenty of games that are like that. But then there are games, like the game I just had, where it involves a little bit of trickery. And then there are games, like for instance, if you want to play something um, a little more intense, like than Final Fantasy XIV, you have to go through all these steps. <laughs> As you can see, it can get pretty intense, but it shows you what wine can do. Wine has the ability to play really, really, really intense games, you know? Also, there have been um, uh, uh, videos of people playing Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt, which is the latest, I believe it's the latest of the Witcher series, uh, all under Wine and Linux. So, now, you're wondering, you know, I'm sure some of you are wondering, you know, wow, this is pretty cool, but isn't there a simpler way? Isn't there like a one-stop shop where I could just do a click and it'll just all this for me? That is the power of Lutris. So let's, let's look at the Lutris website. So let's go to. So, well, what the Lutris website does, it, it curates um, a you know a, a category of games that that can run on the platform, and and the way Lutris works is, is for example, let's let's go to here. So this is Witcher Three: The Wild Hunt, right? So there are two ways you can run this game in Lutris. You can either, if you bought the game through GOG, which is a good old games, and you have the Windows executable, you just, or this is actually an install script that will actually install this executable in a wine environment. 
or let's say you bought let's say that you bought the Windows um, the Windows Steam version. This if you click this install button, it'll actually launch Nutris, um, launch the uh, the the Steam the Windows Steam application that it that it has, and it'll install the game for you. Now let's take a look at this script. So actually, you could if you go to here and hit Edit Installer, you scroll down, and you can actually see what this script does. And what's really neat about Lutris is that it's an open community. So anybody who wants, if if they want their game, um, or if they want instructions on how to get the game working in Wine, what they can do is they can write a script themselves, post it on the forum, or post it at I'm sorry at, at Post it in Lutris. <laughs> it gets reviewed and then it gets published. And so, if someone else has that game and they want it to work, they could just go to the site, click the install button. The Lutris client will take care of the rest. So that is one of the great benefits of Lutris, and that's why I really like Lutris. So, for instance, um, I have Dark Souls Three in my Steam library. So instead of trying to figure out what I got to do to get it to work, I just use the Lutris installer and the Lutris installer builds a special wine environment just for my game and you know sets it up the way it needs to set up and I can play it so if if you haven't please check this site out um, use the client and and if you want if you have if you see a game that you want to play that's not in the Lutris direct uh, repository work on creating a script. They actually even have a good instructions right here on how to write a script and and all the details it goes into setting up your system, if you have to do some special configuration. It, it's a really good thorough thorough explanation. Um, also, if you have any troubles, I mean, there's a forum where you can post your questions saying, hey, you know, um, I got this game. I know it works under Wine. I know the settings I got to put in. Here's where I got so far in the script, and I'm pretty sure that the people in the community will be more than happy to help you, because they want as many games as they can to be available for people. So, with that said, all right, let's look at the Lutris client again. So, if you go over here, it says manage runners, and and these are like your emulators. That, that you, if you want to install, it's just you go over here, you click it, and it installs the emulator, and then you have the option of um, uh, uh, installing games through through here. Um, if you scroll all the way down, you see that they have Wine Steam. So I already have it installed. So basically, what this does is when you click install, it creates a Wine environment, and it actually installs the Windows version of Steam. So if, so then if you go over here. And you click run. Let me minimize this real quick. As you can see, it launches it launches its own version of wine. This this area always happens, but you can just close it. You can ignore it. Look. Here you go. Close this out. Go to my library, and here it is. And if you look, if we compare this with my, let's go here. Let's go to all games, right? So this is how you know these two are existing in separate environments. So this is my. This is, like I said, the Windows Steam client. You notice it only recognizes Infested Planet as installed, All right? Which, if we went to my Lutris client, you see I have that here. But if we go over here, this is the Linux client. And if you look, what are the games it sees as installed? Well, it sees the Away Team, which is what we have. It sees the Long Dark. It sees Orwell. It sees Rise to Ruin. It sees Sunless Sea, and it sees Stellaris. But it doesn't see Infested Planet. Right, that's because Lutris, Lutris Steam client is separated from my Linux Steam client. So this is a nice way that I can segregate. Okay, this client manages my Linux games. This client manages my Windows games, and it makes everything nice and nice and separate. And you can, and also over here, 
you know, a way that I know is they're not conflicting is I actually have two notifications for Steam. See this over here? This white one is the Linux note is the Linux icon. This tells me that this represents my Linux Steam instance. And this over here tells me that I that this represents my Windows Steam instance. That's what I know. But just by looking at these notifications, which version I am running. So let's close these out. And we'll uh, we'll exit out of the Windows one. We'll keep the our Linux one, we'll keep the Windows one for open. So Infested planets. Let's see if this works. So we're going to go over here to my games or wine. No, it's under games, I believe. Infested planet. Infested planet. I mean, where are you? You're here somewhere. So under other, let's do in. There it is. Let's see. Close that. There you go. Look. If you want to, you know, you could barely tell. I mean, I don't know if you can't tell. It, 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 it plays fairly natively. I mean, you know, unless someone told you, you couldn't tell this was this was a Windows game. I mean, that I mean that's how much wine has advanced. I mean, yes, there are some games that aren't that, that will not work under wine, but wine is getting gets better and better with each new release. So it's it's definitely a tool. Um, if you have some Windows games that you know that you've always had um, from before you moved over to Linux, and you you kind of wonder, man, I wish I could play these games. Well, let me tell you, a lot of those games are playable in wine. And if you go over to the Wine website, over here, they have what's called an app database where you can actually search for your game. And it'll give you reviews. People will post their reviews to say that, you know, either it worked or it didn't work or it worked. And these are this is how I got it to work. So this is also a really great resource just to see what games can and cannot play in Wine and how to get them to play in Wine. So... That's one place I would definitely go to. So, now, with that said, that pretty much covers everything I want to talk about. You know, we we installed wine. We installed wine. We installed the game in wine. We went through how to troubleshoot. You know, or or I did, and then I came back and ex explained how I troubleshooted um, getting a game working in wine. Uh, we covered the Lutris client. We covered um, how Lutris treats um, the runners that it installs. That how Lutris you know keeps um, the game engines that it uses separate from the rest of the system. And I I showed that through the Windows instance of Steam versus the Linux instance of Steam. I showed you that games run pretty well, and I showed you um, uh, the app the app DB site in in the YHQ to show you how to look for, you know, to see if games work. So, um, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe, share it, and once again, thank you for your time.